is up you guys welcome back to my channel we are doing another dust and discuss today so make sure you grab your figures and your or whatever brush you use to dust them or don't honestly <laughs> i don't blame you if you don't dust your figures at this point i'm like so over it we're filming a dust and discuss today so uh, please make sure you like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts uh, in the comment section below. Today's topic is, <laughs> I don't even know how I'm going to title this because I feel like the title would be too long, but I'll figure it out. It's going to be types of anime merch or figures that I swore I would never buy. And now I have fallen <laughs> into the hole of buying in one way or another. So yeah, and then I will also mention stuff that I swore I'd never buy and then I have been pretty good at <laughs> keeping my word on that. Also, sorry, I look a mess today, but anyways. Uh, we're here for me complaining not for um <laughs> not for my looks hopefully i have my list i have it written down so i won't forget uh some of the stuff and um this is like no shade to anybody that like some of the stuff that i don't want to collect uh is just because that type of merch i feel like is not for me and isn't i don't know i i i in my opinion i don't like how they look and the style of them. So this is no shade to people that do like the style of them. The reason I say that is because there is one type of figure in here that I know a lot of people collect. Um, they don't just do anime figures, but they do do a lot of it. And I feel like at some point there was a little, there was a little tension between people who like this type of figure and people that don't. You might already know what I'm talking about, but if not, we will get to it. But anyways, um, let's start off with the most obvious one, Nendroids. So if you are new to my channel, I want you guess how well that has been going for me, me swearing not to collect Nendroids. I just want you to take a, take a good guess. Um, let me, let me, let me start dusting while you guess, huh? Um, so if you haven't guessed, not too well. <laughs> not too well. As a matter of fact, I have a ton of Nendroids. I don't know what it is. I cannot help myself and I do give myself some slack if it's a Nendroid of like a character or from a series that doesn't get enough attention or doesn't have figures at all. But I do have Nendroids of characters that do have scales and other other types of figures. So I don't know what it is. You know, it's like once you fall into that rabbit hole of Nendroids, it's so hard to get out of it. I, I give so much credit to people who only decide to collect Nendroids because I cannot imagine the frustration of A, trying to dust them, B, trying to keep all their parts, you know, organized or like C, even just trying to move them at all, like in any way, trying to put them together or change their poses. If you do change their poses, like extra credit to people who do regularly change their poses. Because once I pose an Android, I am never changing it ever. So then I'm like, what's the point of me getting a Nendroid, right? I do know they sell Nendroid petites now, but I don't want to collect those either. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. Moving on, that leads me on to Nendroid dolls. Now, I don't really collect Nendroid dolls. I, the, <laughs> as, I don't know if you can see that as there's like a Sebastian and CL Nendroid doll behind me. Um, the only Nendroid dolls I have are these two Black Butler ones of Sebastian and CL and the Dazai one from Bungo Stray Dogs. However, <laughs> I, they did recently come out with a Chuya one. So, you know, <laughs> I did pre-order that. But, okay, you cannot blame me. Like, if I got CL, of course I was going to get Sebastian. So if I got Daza, of course I was going to get Chia. Like, you're not going to tell me. Yeah, okay, like, okay. But I haven't gotten anything from another, like, series. I feel like I've been pretty good on not getting Nendroid dolls. The Nendroid dolls are super cute. It's just that I, I typically don't like jointed figures. Nendroid dolls are kind of nice because of, like, the clothes kind of hide the joints. But, oh my god, the first Nendroid doll I bought was the Dazai one. And it is such a pain in the ass to put their clothes on. I had so much trouble with Dazai's, but the most trouble I've had was with the Sebastian Nendroid doll. I don't know what it is. Every time I try to put his pants up, his, like, calf comes off 
every time like it never fails and it's probably loose right now like i don't even have it all the way in it is so annoying and don't get me started on putting on their socks and their shoes on if if i get frustrated with a regular nendroid i don't know what made me think that i could handle an android doll i i'm not that person i don't know who i thought i was when i bought it but no like i feel like the chuya one is going to be my last nendroid doll and that's only because i really really love chuya and i have the dolls i want and of course i'm gonna put them together because i ship them together but anyways next one. Oh, what do i have oh, okay i swore that i would never collect pop-up parades okay i have two pop-up parades behind me you can probably see them right there in the back. Who are they, Dazai and Chuya? But I will say, these are like the only pop-up parades I have. So I I have been doing really good on them, but they recently, I don't know what you would define as recent for this, but they, they started coming out with like pop-up parade larges and like, I don't know, they expanded, Good Smile has expanded their pop-up parade line and they look really good from the the ones i've seen like they came and they've come out with like characters like maka from soul eater which is like awesome they announced a few other ones that like are really good i just can't think of one at the top of my head for some reason and i am considering getting those now depending on how how it looks of course but i think if i were to collect a pop-up parade uh it would probably be like a large one I just like larger figures. I feel like, I don't know, I, I I appreciate the bigger figures a lot more. Okay, I'm going like back and forth on like figures and like a different anime merch. My list is like all over the place. But moving on from figures for a second, acrylic stands. I didn't say that I swore I'd never collect acrylic stands, but I didn't want to make it. If I was going to buy an acrylic stand, it would be a couple here and a couple there, okay? When I'm done recording this video, I'm going to pick up my camera and show you. I have, above my curtains, <laughs> I have a whole shelf and it's like full to the brim of just acrylic stands of Bungo Stray Dogs. Like just Bungo Stray Dogs. And then I have acrylic stands on my dresser and on top of my um, figure shelf here and there of like different series. I... I don't know. Once you fall down that rabbit hole, there's no getting out of it for the most part, you know? I have just fallen so in love with acrylic stands. I've seen a couple of Gojo ones that I really, really want. Um, but for the most part, like 99% of my acrylic stands are from Bungo Stray Dogs. I, yeah. Ah. That's what happens when you get into a hyperfixation, you know? And Jesus Christ. Okay, going back to figures. Ugh. Man, I swore I would never collect like unlicensed resin figures. I take it back. I don't know. I don't really remember what the exact reason was. I think I, it was just that like I like things that were licensed, right? And then I think I also have the impression that if it was unlicensed, that automatically meant that the quality was going to be bad or the paintwork would be bad. And that's completely untrue because some of the resins I have or unlic unlicensed figures I have are a hundred times more detailed than some of the other like licensed figures i own like it's insane so i'm so glad that i did end up giving it a shot the only downside is it's like, really costly the figures themselves are super expensive and then the shipping is insane and then sometimes your figures come in broken and you don't want that so i personally add insurance to them <laughs> so that's another cost you gotta pay right there but they are really nice and and the other thing i like about it is i feel like the concepts are so much stronger than licensed figures a lot of the licensed figures especially nowadays are so boring sometimes it's just like a character standing there or there's just like not enough going on but like there's so much dynamic to the resin figures they're just so much better. We have like a Nana figure coming out or a Nana resin figure coming out. Um, I just paid for the shipping on that one. So I cannot wait for that to come in. I will be unboxing it on camera once it does come in. I'm so excited. But yeah, I, I love it so much. So um, I can't wait to film that. Moving on. Next ones, noodle stoppers. Got these two noodle stoppers. And then I have, I have a Zenitsu one. 
that I bought a long time ago. And then I have the Mappa Studios Gojo scale figure, which is a glorified noodle stopper. So yeah, I don't know. They are so... Obviously, I'm not using them as noodle stoppers. I don't think anybody that buys a noodle stopper figure actually uses them as a noodle stopper. Yeah, I don't know. But I've been, I've been doing pretty good with these as well. Um, I, these are Those are my only two. Well, those are like the most recent ones I got. Um, my very first one was a Zenitsu one. And I haven't... That was when he like first came out. And I haven't gotten one since then unless you... Unless you count the glorified noodle stopper scale figure of gojo <laughs> but yeah i have been doing really good on that again that's another one i'm going to be super picky about but i i did mention the reason why i mention it is because i swore i wouldn't collect it at all and clearly i have <laughs> so there's that one um but i feel like i can hold myself back on those oh but i really want the gojo one too We'll see. Anyways, let's take a break from figures. We're gonna go into merch. Tapestries. Tapestries, tapestries, however you say it. As of now, I only have one anime tapestry and it's a Chuya one uh, where it's a cafe themed one. And I have them hanging like on the wall above my coffee machine. There's a Dazai version that I really want as well. So when I find it, I am going to get it. And then I have another Bungo Stray Dogs tapestry of this beautiful art by Sango Haruka Harukawa that is coming in. And it's like one of my favorite arts from her of these characters. So after that, I'm done with the I think I'm done with the tapestries. The only reason I don't like the tapestries is because I don't like the look of the wire, you know, and then you have to put a pin through it. And then you have the like bars that like hold the wire. Like, I don't like that uh, the scroll aesthetic thing on my walls. Okay, y'all, so I'm currently editing this video and I got the tapestry in and I wanna take this opportunity to show it to you guys and go back and talk about the things I mentioned that I don't like about collecting tapestries. Now, this one, I do like, and I wasn't expecting it to look like this when I hung it up. The first reason I mentioned that I don't like tapestries is because I don't like that wire that shows or that string that shows when you hang the tapestry up. In this case, I actually managed to hide it by placing it under the poster I have at the top. I think this looks a hundred times better and I'm so glad that I figured <laughs> this technique out. I mean, it's not rocket science, but you know, you know me. And then the second thing that I dislike about tapestries is that bar that shows sometimes. In this case, the cloth and the background of the artwork is blocking the bar, basically. The image I had in my head of a tapestry that I don't like is, and I will show you because I have a small one. It is of the Chuya tapestry that I mentioned earlier that sits above my coffee machine. And as you can see, it's got the bars and the cloth or the background of the image does not cover them up or doesn't blend into them in any way. And you've got the string up there. I do think if I used a clear thumbtack, it would look a little better. It, it just looks very tacky to me, but I do really love this cafe theme. And that's the main reason I got it is because I love a Chia and I love anything with like a cafe AU or anything cafe related. With my favorite characters, this is the image I had in mind when I was talking about tapestries and why I don't like them. So I guess I'm okay with getting them as long as they look like this where I can hide the bar and I can hide the string underneath a, a, another poster. So yeah, I just wanted to bring attention to that back to the video. Okay, so next one, they're bunny figures. At first I said I'd never collect them because I was like, I feel like that's so boring. Like after a while I thought it would get so boring to have all these characters in the same outfits. Now, I still kind of agree. I feel like it's getting old, especially with that price point. The only thing I feel like that's keeping people from buying bunny figures, and correct me if I'm wrong, also like if, if this is not true for you at all, but I think like the main thing is the fact that there are quarter scales. Like they are one of the only figure companies freeing um, that do 
quarter scales so often as well. I would be more convinced to buying a figure or a quarter scale figure from them if they just make quarter scales in their regular outfits or any other like, or like baz up the, the bunny outfit a little bit. There's a power bunny figure from Freeing and then recently, I don't know if it recently got announced or recently got released or something, but I saw it a, like a few days ago. There's this other bunny figure of power. It's not a quarter scale and it's not from Freeing. Her outfit just looks so much more fun. If you're gonna do bunny outfits and like continue this whole theme of bunny figures, at least like make it unique in some way. Also, I feel like some of these recently, recent bunny figures, their their sculpts look a little bit off, right? They don't translate, they're not translating the character onto the figure that well or as well. And I think this is, this is true for a lot of figure companies, not just for freeing. Uh, I feel like there's, I, I feel like they're rushing a lot. And I feel like now it's like more about the buck. Of course it was always about the buck. Than, than anything else. But I feel like even it's more prominent now that it's more about um, them making money off of you and getting like these figures as fat, out as fast as possible to make money off of you than to actually, you know, get money off of you, but also give you what you paid for in a sense, right? So there's that, but that's like a whole other issue to talk about. Um, but I only have, oh, I was about to say, I only have three bunny figures. I have the Ryuko from Kill a Kill. That was my very first one. And then I have um, Alba and Hifumi from New Game. And I don't have any on pre-order right now. Okay, moving on. Uh, I'm going to list a few things that I swore I would never collect. And I've, I've like, I've kept my word on it. First up is pinback buttons. I do not collect any pinback buttons at all. The, the only pinback buttons I have is when I went to my first two conventions years back. I mean, like this is before I started collecting figures. I would go to like artist alleys or I would like find in the dealer's hall buttons of my favorite characters but I don't even have a lot of those. And I've never bought s since I started collecting anime figures or anime merch. And then like, if I do get any, uh, it's usually because I bought something online and somebody just sent it for free, but I'm not actively going out and buying these for myself. Next up, oh, okay. I swore I would never collect q poskets. I think that's how you say it. And I've kept my word for this. I just don't like the look of them. Yeah, I just don't, I don't like the look of them. I, that's, that's as simple as it gets. Next up is figmas. So I mentioned this like when I was talking about the Nendroid dolls, I don't like figures with joints. They feel very, I don't know. <laughs> they feel, they feel like toys rather than something you can display as like, again, for the lack of a better term, like as this like artsy kind of, you know what I mean? They feel like, like toys. Okay, and if you collect Figmas, I'm sorry. It's, a, it, it's just not for me. And that's how I feel about them. And I'm, if you like Figmas, go for it go for it. Figmas to me are meant to be played with like an action figure and that's not what I'm looking for and they're probably not but that's what they seem like to me when you like add joints to them and everything. That That's just not what I, I personally want to have on my shelves okay. Jesus. <laughs> okay next up I only own one of this type of figure and it's a holiday themed figure. I only have the Trick or Miku and that's because I've been wanting her for so long. I think like the little her, her design is just so adorable that it's so hard to resist not to get it. I really don't want to collect holiday figures, okay? I just don't like... The Trick or Miku feels weird to me displaying it now, especially because it's not Halloween, right? So it feels weird that it's sitting there on my shelf, especially next to like figures that aren't holiday themed at all too, but also because it's not that time of year. It feels more like a decoration than a, a display item. Another one is OC figures or original character figures. Some of the original character figures that have come out are so cool. I think this one's an original character figure, but there was one where there's this figure of this girl and she's coming out of a computer screen or a TV screen. And I thought it was so cool because I just love that idea. But A, I have no connection to this character at all. I don't know anything about them. It feels like I'm buying a 
figure of a, a character from a series that I've never watched, right? Like, what is the point? You could say she just looks cool and she looks nice, but if I were to get every figure that looked cool and nice, I'd end up homeless on the street. I cannot, I personally cannot do that to myself. I already go crazy when it comes to figures of characters I like. So if I start buying figures of characters I don't even know, I, I'd run out of room in a blink of an eye. Yeah, I just I don't have a connection to them. So I don't feel the point. Um, I can appreciate them behind the screen and I can appreciate them in other people's collection, but it's just not for me. Another one is a fairly new line from Good Smile Company and it's the Hello Good Smile figures. They're cute, but again, they're not for me. They look like those paper craft figures that people would make. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Like you would print out the die line for like your favorite character online and then you would cut it out and fold it and it would make like this like paper craft figure. It's fun. And I feel like if you have like a shelf of manga, it would be really cute to dis display it on there, but I don't really collect manga and I don't have like a dedicated shelf to manga. It's just, again, not for me. <laughs> okay, and this last one is what I was talking about at the start of my video where I feel like a while back, I don't know if this is still true today, right now, but I feel like there was tension between people who like this type of figure and people who dislike these types of figures. They're Funko Pops. I, I, again, not for me. <laughs> I, I know that that's like the safest answer, but I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna shit on anybody that collects them because again, it's good for you if you like them, I don't, I don't know. But for me, I, I personally don't like them. They're, for the most part, creepy to me. They have like the beady eyes and then I don't like the, they look too boxy for me maybe, I don't know. I don't know if you can argue that it's a chibi look, I guess it is, but it's too, it looks like, it looks like, <laughs> It looks like if you gave a chibi an airhead and you put them in those airhead commercials. Okay, that's the best way I could describe it. I will give props to people that do collect them because I have seen some dedicated people who collect Funko Pops. I've seen people have like a whole wall of just like the Funko Pops in their boxes and it's like filling up an entire room. So kudos to you, uh, you have a lot of dedication for that. The next ones are Swatch House. They are basically Nendroids sitting on a chair. That's the best way I can describe it. The only ones I have, uh, so I have the Bungo Stray Dogs ones. Uh, yeah, I don't, they're, they're good. They are a cheap alternative, but I, if I'm getting the Nendroids, then I, there's no point in the Swatch House, right? For me, at least. I don't, I'm, I did a whole video dedicated to unboxing, un unboxing those. And I think the bottom line that I came to was whether they're worth getting or not was it depends really with, with the affordability, I get part of it. And whether you, like, if you can't collect Nendroids, then these are a great alternative. And like, you don't really have to worry about them, let's say breaking or damaging them because they, if you want to get another one, they're cheaper than like getting another Nendroid, let's say replacing those. But there, I have a whole video about that, but um, I just don't think they're, I'm going to be collecting them. I don't see a point in it. That is my list. So wish me luck on how I'm going to title this video because <laughs> I really don't know yet. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if you relate to this at all and what, what, what things have you sworn off and have failed and what have you sworn off that you've succeeded with. And yeah, I will see you in the next video, which is hopefully, hopefully soon. Bye-bye guys.